Your Honor, the evidence shows that Ms. Hurd cannot prevail on her claim because she cannot and did not establish that Mr. Waldman made the statements with actual malice. Mr. Waldman testified that he conducted extensive investigation and reasonably, reasonably believed that this, the three statements he made were true. Ms. Hurd presented nothing, nothing to contradict that undisputed fact. Ms. Hurd has no evidence of direct liability because obviously, Your Honor, we need to talk about direct and vicarious liability, but it bears noting that she has no evidence of direct liability and cannot prove actual malice by Mr. Waldman when making the three statements at issue. It is undisputed that Mr. Depp did not make any of the three statements at issue in Ms. Hurd's counterclaim. Moreover, in order for Mr. Depp to be liable for the conduct of one of his attorneys, there must be some showing that he directed, participated, or otherwise authorized Mr. Waldman to make the statements at issue. There is no such evidence on the record that Mr. Depp directed or otherwise authorized Mr. Waldman to make the three allegedly defamatory statements at issue in the counterclaims. Indeed, there is no evidence of any communication or coordination between Mr. Depp and Mr. Waldman regarding the counterclaim statements or anything else. For this reason as well, Your Honor, Ms. Hurd cannot meet her burden of proving that Mr. Waldman was acting within the scope of his employment as our agency on behalf of Mr. Depp. Again, it bears noting that there's no evidence that Mr. Depp even saw the statements by Mr. Waldman until he was sued, served with the counterclaims well into this case. It was more than a year after Mr. Depp filed his complaint and Ms. Hurd lost a series of motions to dismiss that she finally asserted her counterclaims, most of which have already been dismissed by opinion letter of this court. Whereas here there is no evidence of direct liability, Ms. Hurd must rely on a theory of vicarious liability to hold Mr. Depp liable for the actions or statements, rather, of his purported agent, Mr. Waldman. Vicarious liability is by definition, quote, liability for the tort of another person, unquote. So to hold Mr. Depp liable for Mr. Waldman's statements, Ms. Hurd must establish that Mr. Waldman himself committed all the elements of defamation. I know the court's familiar with this, so I'll try to run through it quickly. C. Parker v. Carillon Clinic, 296 Virginia 319 at 332, a 2018 case, quote, vicarious liability is liability for the tort of another person. It necessarily follows that a claimant cannot make out a case for vicarious liability against an employer without first proving that the employee committed a tort within the scope of his employment. See also Roughton Pontiac Corp. v. Alston, 236 Virginia 152 at page 156. Which standard Ms. Hurd has not met? And, Your Honor, we cite a string citation to cases from other jurisdictions, which we obviously are not binding on the court, but we believe are influential. We presented those to the court for its review. It is Ms. Hurd's burden to prove by clear and convincing evidence, or ultimately, to prove actual malice by Mr. Waldman, not Mr. Depp. And while it is well-settled law in Virginia, as Your Honor has pointed out, pointed out last week, that an agent's knowledge can be imputed to a principal, and this is the Allen Realty Corp. v. Holbert case, 227 Virginia 441 at 446. Ms. Hurd's counsel cannot cite any case law stating that a principal's knowledge is imputed to an agent. In other words, Mr. Waldman must have made the statements knowing that they were false or with reckless disregard as to whether they were false. And Mr. Depp's knowledge cannot be imputed to him. There is no evidence in the record that Mr. Waldman knew the counterclaim statements were false. Indeed, 
Mr. Waldman did not even know Mr. Depp or Ms. Heard at the time of any of the alleged incidents at issue, and thus had no personal knowledge of what transpired. And this is reflected in the trial transcript that Mr. Waldman met Mr. Depp first in October of 2016, long after the fact. Nor is there any evidence in the record that Mr. Waldman subjectively entertained any serious doubts about the falsity of the counterclaim statements. Quite the opposite. The evidence shows, and it's unrebutted, that Mr. Waldman had very reasonable grounds to believe, and he did believe, and will to his dying day, that Ms. Heard's claim of abuse were patently false. Mr. Waldman testified at length about 29 witnesses he believed disproved Ms. Heard's false claims of abuse. Uh, see the transcript at page uh, 6008 through 6012, and I won't run through all of that. But his testimony that two trained police officers, Officer Science and Haddon, were called to the penthouse on May 21, 2016, and saw no signs of injury on Ms. Heard's face as well as, quote, Ms. Heard's own witnesses who have testified in various forms at various times that there were no injuries to her face whatsoever between May 21st and May 27th, 2016, when she walked in to court with her publicist, her lawyer, uh, her former best friend who no longer speaks with her for a no-notice ex parte TRO. Some of the witnesses whom Mr. Waldman has cited, they include Laura DeVenier, Melanie Inglesis, who, as Your Honor recalls, is, was uh, Ms. Hurd's makeup artist, who decided to end any professional or personal association with Ms. Hurd. Uh, Samantha McMillan, Hilda Vargas, Isaac Baruch, Trinity Esparza, Cornelius Harrell, Alejandro Romero, and Brandon Patterson, just to name a few. No reasonable jury could find that Mr. Waldman acted with actual malice in making the allegedly defamatory statements. He was not present for the alleged incidents. He has no personal knowledge of any of the alleged incidents. What Mr. Waldman knows is a product of the legal work he did, the sleuthing he did on behalf of Mr. Depp. Ms. Heard cannot possibly show that Mr. Waldman with acted with actual malice and her defamation claim must fail. Two, Mr. Waldman is an independent contractor, not an employee. It is axiomatic, Your Honor, that a person who hires an independent contractor is not liable for the independent contractor's actions. See Sanchez versus Medicorp Health System, 270 Virginia, 299 at 344. An independent contractor is a person who is engaged to produce a specific result, but who is not subject to the control of the employer principal as to the way to bring about that result. See Atkinson versus Sachno, 261 Virginia, 378 at 284. That's a 2001 case. An outside lawyer retained by a client in connection with litigation is an independent contractor. C. King versus Dalton, 895 F. Sup. 831, Eastern District of Virginia, 1995. Where Judge Ellis, a legendary jurist known by all Virginia practitioners, held that, quote, a law firm attorney working with a client is nonetheless an independent contractor and is not an employee of the client corporation. In that case, the employer was a corporation, but the same logic applies when it's an individual like Mr. Depp. That was Mr. Waldman's role. Indeed, clients hire lawyers to obtain specific results, or to try to obtain specific results, but they do not control the means by which the results are, are, in, are accomplished. Lawyers, as Your Honor has reminded us, are subject to professional obligations to exercise independent professional judgment. We, can, we are not at the whim of our clients as much as we want to serve them. See Virginia State Bar Professional Guidelines, Rule 1, colon 2, and 
2.1, and just to quote 2.1, in representing a client, a lawyer shall exercise independent professional judgment, unquote. Mr. Waldman is, as a matter of law, an independent contractor, and Mr. Depp cannot be held responsible for any alleged tort by his attorney, particularly uh, for statements about which he was unaware until he was sued for them. Mr. Waldman testified, and it's unrebutted, that he has, an he has his own law firm. He's not an employee of Mr. Depp. Mr. Depp and or none of his loan out companies have, have issued him a W-2. And Mr. Waldman provides legal services to clients other than in an addition to Mr. Depp. And that's found at the transcript page 6020 through 21. All of that is unrebutted by Ms. Hurd. Mr. Waldman's statements, the third reason for which we respectfully submit the counterclaim should be stricken, is that Mr. Waldman's statements were protected opinion. And I won't run through all of that, but very briefly, taken in their proper context, the counterclaim statements are non-actionable expressions of opinion entitled to protection under the First Amendment. See Gertz versus Robert Welchink, 418 U.S. 323 at 339. That's a 1974 case from the United States Supreme Court. See also Shacker B. Buffalt, a Virginia Supreme Court case found at 290 Virginia 83, a, two, a 2015 case, noting that where, quote, all sides of the issue, as well as the rationale for the speaker's view were exposed, the assertion of deceit reasonably could be understood only as the speaker's personal conclusion, unquote, and finding in an accusation of deceit to be opinion. In context, Your Honor, any reporter or any reasonable reader would understand and expect a lawyer associated with Mr. Depp, as Mr. Uh, Waldman was, to challenge Ms. Hurd's version of the inherently controversial events of the party's marriage. Just as Ms. Hurd's lawyers were, were quoted challenging Mr. Depp, and Your Honor will remember the context of these quotes that were in a British tabloid where Mr. Waldman's statements were buried well into article in which both points of view uh, were clearly expressed. And Mr. Waldman was clearly identified not as an independent expert on the U.S. Constitution, but as one of, of Mr. Depp's attorneys. Uh, C. Chavez, uh, 230 Virginia 112 at page 119, quote, the most unsophisticated recipient of such a claim, i.e. any reader of the British tabloid, made by a competitor against another could only regard it as a relative statement of opinion grounded upon the speaker's obvious bias, unquote. Mr. Waldman has never done, never did anything to hide uh, his support and of and belief in Mr. Depp. Finally, Your Honor, and for the rest, uh, ultimately, Mr. Waldman's statements reflect the existence of two competing narratives and are merely his subjective view about events that he never claims to have witnessed. And there was no doubt about that. Turning to the second part of the argument, which will be more abridged, Ms. Hurd is not entitled to anti-slap immunity. As a threshold matter, Virginia Code Section 8.01-223.2, which is, as Your Honor well knows, is the Virginia anti-slap statute amended most recently in 2019, provides in relevant part, quote, the, uh, the immunity provided by this section shall not apply to any statements made with actual or constructive knowledge that they are false or with reckless disregard for whether they are false. Here, in addition to Mr. Depp's testimony, 
Several witnesses have testified that, A, they never witnessed Mr. Depp abuse Ms. Hurd, and B, that they observed Ms. Hurd without any injuries, marks, bruising, swelling, etc., during periods when Ms. Hurd claimed to have injuries, marks, bruises, etc. Such witnesses include, but are not limited to, Isaac Baruch, Kate James, Dr. David Kipper, Nurse Debbie Lloyd, Officer Sines and Haddon, Officer William Gatlin, and former U.S. Marine Starling Jenkins. Ms. Hurd's request for anti-slap immunity should be stricken, and even if there were disputing even if there were disputed facts as to that, the anti-slap immunity does not apply because the defamatory implication of misheard statements are not solely relating to a matter of public concern as is required under the statute. As has become quite clear, Your Honor, Mr. Depp uh, is not suing about any of the pub public uh, policy commentary made by the ACLU when it drafted the op-ed and Ms. Hurd put her name to it. What he is suing about here are the three statements that were directed at him. He has no issue with women's rights. He supports women's rights. In fact, he was the one, Your Honor, as Your Honor knows, who made that first $100,000 contribution to the ACLU and he made it also to the CHL. Your Honor, at this point, I'm going to object. Um, Mr. Chu has largely just read his brief and confined his arguments to those directed in the motion. But like we saw with the last motion to strike, he's now directing his arguments to something other than what's at issue here. And I would object because I think making an argument not to you but to the cameras, it threatens, it's disrespectful to the court and everyone's time. And it also threatens to undermine the integrity of this process and risk the jury being influenced by outside factors. Well, it, it's his argument. I'll allow him to do his Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. As I was trying to say, what Mr. Depp is suing about are the three statements. And it's very clear, despite the pious opening statement that about the First Amendment, that with the testimony of Terrence Doherty and the emails that were admitted as exhibits, that the ACLU and Ms. Heard were conspiring to make it very clear that those three statements were related to Mr. Depp. Because otherwise, nobody had any interest in the article. And it, it's crystal clear from that. They wanted to time this thing with the release of Aquaman, which was her first film of any significance in terms of uh, popularity, and to do that. Uh, that's very clear. So the charade that this had something to do with public policy is risible. And that is not why the anti-slap protections were enacted. They were enacted to protect the rest of the article, not what Mr. Depp is suing about. As generally analyzed by the courts, a matter of public concern is one which relates to, quote, a matter of political, social, or other concern to the community, unquote, as opposed to a matter of only, quote, personal interest, unquote. That's Connick versus Myers, 461 U.S. 138 at page 146. Instead, the defamatory implication at issue in each of the three states, uh, statements at bar relate to the personal grievances between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard, which does not rise to the level of a matter of public concern with broader implications for society beyond the two litigants in this action any more than Mr. Waldman's statements. I mean, the adding the gloss of public policy might immunize the statements that relate to public policy, but those are not at issue here. Mr. Depp agrees with those statements. We're talking about the three statements that they very intentionally and very cleverly put in to make it clear the implication that it was about Mr. Depp. They had lawyers from the ACLU working around the clock with Eric George to, make, to be as clever about this as possible. And Your Honor remembers the testimony of Mr. Doherty about the consternation at the ACLU when they realized that USA Today and everybody else who read the article knew darn well that this was about Mr. Depp. 
This cannot be protected by the anti-slap statute. It is a cynical runaround. And I think now that we have the undisputed evidence from, from the ACLU in the form of the testimony of Terrence Doherty, who is not only their corporate representative, he was their general counsel. He is a brainiac lawyer. They knew exactly what they were doing, Your Honor. And one of the, he referred to testimony of a woman at the ACLU who said she had nightmares about Ms. Hurd, and he expressed no concern about that. Now, that was either because they knew about, that was either a reference to this game they were playing with the op-ed or the conspiracy they had to cover up her failure to make the donations. The donations became pledges, but now, but we have evidence that she refused to sign the pledge card. So, she's caught either way. Simply stated, Your Honor, Mr. Depp is not suing Ms. Hurd for making statements about society in general. I think that's very clear from the record evidence. Mr. Depp is suing her for publicly naming him as an abuser by implication and forever tarnishing his good name. An act that, coming from an ex-spouse, is fundamentally personal in nature. For that reason as well, Your Honor, Virginia's anti-slap statute is not applicable. And based on the four foregoing, Your Honor, Mr. Depp respectfully submits that the court should grant plaintiff's motion to strike the counterclaims and also strike her claim that she is immune under the anti-slap statute. Thank, thank you very thank much, you. Your Honor. Thank you.